<laughs> and now I'd like to introduce Mr. Bruce Hornridge. Okay, hi. Uh, this one uh, I was going to submit to Mr. Hanbury and uh, Jacqueline for uh, their anthology uh, on Port Alberni. It's uh, a little bit weak in the fact that uh, at the end of the story it uh, speaks of Port Alberni, but anyway, uh, we'll uh, go with water bombers. I'll just read half of it and maybe some other time read the other half. In 1967, I was 18 years of age and went logging in Kennedy Lake Division of McMullen Bloedel, limited near Euclid on the west coast of Vancouver Island, BC. To get a higher education, I would need to earn an amount of money and logging was the employment for earning the big bucks. Everything was huge in the new world adventure of manly work. The machines were huge to move the trees, which were sometimes bigger than the machines. The weather was hot that summer. The forest was drying out and the fire hazard was rising. Now, sometimes big events start with small beginnings. On August the 3rd, a road construction crew doing improvement work on Highway 4 blew up some rock near Sutton Creek in the Taylor River Valley. Fly rock cut a nearby hydro wires. This ended the electrical service to the West Coast for several days, but it's also started a fire in the tinder dry brush beside the road. The afternoon wind started blowing. The attempt to put out the flames with a small plain water drop missed the part, part of the burning area. That allowed the fire to rush across the slash and up the ridge of standing trees. For this was the small beginnings of the Taylor River Fire of 1967. The battle was on to fight the flames. I would have a part in that battle, but that's another story. Two of the water bombers Mars water bombers uh, were the primary attack aircraft for the flying tankers group based in Port Alberni. That company was formed by several island logging companies to combat forest fires in the valuable forest lands. McMillan Bloedale Limited was the biggest company, so they sponsored the development of the planes at their maintenance base in, on Sprout Lake. The planes were huge and had a great carrying capacity for water. Shaped like a boat, with wings, they could touch land on the lake water, skim across the surface and refill from most lakes on the island. These planes were the answer to fighting forest fires. The Taylor River fire was exciting for me because it was because I was a first timer at fighting forest fires. My first two nights were on the end of a fire hose in amongst the flames shooting them down. The third day, I was on a spot fire patrol in the western end of the fire. In the distance, I could hear the roar of a plane doing water drops and see through the trees as it was refilling on the lake. On the fourth day, I was sent on a Matic crew up the old switchbacks of highway number four to climb the 1200 meter high mountain. The Matic was for hacking a three meter wide clear dirt trail down the mountain so the fire could be stopped from creeping along the hillside. We were to remove any combustible material for the fire to creep through. Walking up the mountain was brutal because I was not in shape yet. Far below through the trees, I could see the bomber refilling. The wind was pushing the front of the flames away off to the east. The mountainside <coughs> that we were walking was already flash over burned with black and small trees and smoldering ground. The air was heavy with smoke, so breathing and seeing was difficult, but there were no flames visible. <coughs> However, any breeze could reignite the area and blow the fire back to the west. Our cleared line was to prevent that from happening. Our crew thinned out. Some workers were directed to improve the dirt line uh, or corral a bit of smoldering ground. Those in better shape went on ahead, while guys like me fell further and further behind because we were resting more frequently. As I was cresting a steep rocky patch of ground, a sapling tree about seven meters tall picked that moment to burn through its roots enough to fall over. It landed smack in front of me. I was shocked that something would actually come after me trying to kill me. I hurried on to catch up with the rest of the fellows. There is safety in numbers. At least someone would know if I got hurt or killed. The bomber chose that moment to pass directly overhead. The ground didn't shake yet, but the distant noise began as a gentle steam jet sound and grew louder 
with more guttural grinding growling. A long, huge boat-shaped structure appeared above the trees coming from the east. Great wings extended from each side with two powerful engines on each. A pontoon stabilizer hung beneath each wingtip. As it passed overhead, the noise elevated suddenly to a ground-shaking behemoth roar. Luckily, it was not dumping water, a low water load that had been done a mile or so to the east. Now it was clawing for altitude to turn down towards the lake for another load. That was the one time I had a close nose to nose, so to speak, with the bombers. It was not, however, the last time I would cross paths with the gargantuans. Anyone who ever saw a Mars bomber perform a water drop or see it fly by will never forget those majesties of the sky. I was driving westward on Highway 4, headed home from Port Alberni to Euclid with the family nodding off in the back of the van. The road approached some trees at a right corner turn to go along Sprout Lake Shore. Nearing the corner, a huge bomber rose up from behind the tr tree tops right in front of me. It was low enough to make a person believe this is it, I'm dead, it's crashing. As it passed overhead, there was the loudest roaring from those four powerhouse engine uh, houses. <clears throat> Another time I again headed west from coming off Taylor River and Sutton Oops. River Bridges. Whoop. Yep. Time up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But please submit that to the uh, Albuli Anthology Project. Yeah, I, uh, you, I hope you, you, you do that. like that story. <laughs> it talks with Port Alberni soon. <laughs> okay. So, thank you, Bruce.